everyone, it's Katrina. Today, I'm taking you underground to explore some amazing things found beneath the surface of our world. From secret tunnels in China to what's under the pyramids and even some buried cities you've never heard of before. Let's go! Tonina's Underworld Mexico's Chiapas state is one of the most spectacular regions of the country. It's totally unlike the borderlands in the north, where the desert is dry and barren and hot. Chiapas is a world of wonder and intrigue. It's full of pyramids, ruins from the Maya civilization, and dense jungles that make you feel as if you're in the Amazon. It's no surprise that this place is home to buried treasure. Let me teleport you now to Tonina an ancient city so wondrous that it's baffling that most people have never heard of it before. Tonina was once a powerful Maya town, now a crumbling sacred ruin. This site is heavily shrouded in trees and foliage. Exotic birds squawk and their feathers drift slowly from the sky. It's a place where you can feel in harmony with nature and get a true sense of the ancient Maya world. But enough of how great the place is, let's delve into its secrets. From the top of the tallest pyramids in the city, you get an incredible view of the surrounding jungle. But there is an entirely different world underneath. Archaeologists discovered a tunnel system shrouded in darkness under Tonina, a full subterranean world that was used in rituals long since forgotten. Describing it as a tunnel system doesn't do it justice. It was more of a labyrinth. Researchers believe the twisting corridors were part of a grand design by an ancient Maya engineer who must have been a genius. The tunnels are connected to burial chambers. They likely served ceremonial and practical purposes, hosting rituals of the funerary kind. The tunnels may have been carved as a way for the Maya to get close to the underworld. But unfortunately, the true nature of the tunnels remains a mystery. The city of Tonina declined and was eventually abandoned. It's believed around the 9th century. Maybe it was war that caused its desertion, or maybe political instability. What types of rituals went on in the dizzying labyrinth of Tonina will likely never be known. Under the Pyramids Underneath the Egyptian pyramids, a world of hidden tunnels has remained unknown to the outside world for centuries. Now, for the first time, the underground chambers and strange passageways are being shown to the public. If you've ever visited the pyramids, you've most likely seen the entranceways to the underworld and not even known. There are multiple shafts blocked off by thick iron gates all around the pyramids. These are the gateways into the underground secrets of the ancient Egyptians. Beyond the Iron Gates, there are pits leading to the deeper levels of the Giza Plateau. Some of the tunnels reach up to 125 feet beneath the surface. Before I continue, keep in mind these are very real tunnels. These are real pictures of the secret passageways underneath the pyramids that archaeologists rarely talk about. There are burial chambers, many of which still contain huge stone sarcophagi with their lids partially ajar. Many of the granite coffins weigh tons and tons. Nobody knows how they were transported through the narrow openings into the underground chambers. Why does nobody know about the tunnels winding underneath the pyramids like a labyrinth? It's a question I don't really have an answer to. In 1993, archaeologists announced the discovery of underground causeways leading between the Cheops Pyramid and the Pyramid of Chephren. They found shafts, courtyards, and roomy side chambers. However, the researchers were hampered by an obscene amount of water. Nobody's ever been able to explore the full reaches of the underground world because of the flood water that seeps through the ground and fills up the corridors. Egyptologist Dr. Salim Hassan spent four long years trying to pump the water out, ultimately giving up. To this day, the water level has not gone down. Nobody even knows where the water is coming from. There is indeed a whole world underneath the pyramids. There are likely more burials that have never been identified, some of them incredibly old. But because of the water and the secrecy, they might never be discovered. As a side note, here's a bit of wisdom to impress your friends with. Only one king was buried inside a pyramid at Giza, and it was Khufu in the Great Pyramid. Most pharaohs like Khafre and Menkare 
were buried in expertly hidden chambers deep beneath their towering pyramids. The Secret Tunnels in China In China, the ruins of Hao Changjui date back 4,000 years. In ancient times, the city was a heavily fortified metropolis. It had trenches, gates, defensive walls, and even turrets. This city was practically covered in armor. All these years later, historians have found a way to sneak past the city's defenses. They have uncovered a network of secret tunnels winding underneath the streets. Hu Changzhui was founded during what is known as the Long Shan period. This was a critical time in Chinese history. Neolithic societies who had been dwelling in caves and rubbing sticks together were suddenly starting to form societies. As groups came together, cities rose from the dust and dirt of the prehistoric world. One of those cities was Hu Changzhui, uncovered by scientists in 2005. Excavations didn't get going though until 2019. There are at least six intersecting tunnels that were carved underneath this ancient place. Researchers believe they were used as a hidden transport network. Photos from the excavation show the rough entranceway into one of the tunnels, with its preserved arch still there. These were some expertly carved passageways. But it isn't just the extent of the tunnels that researchers find impressive, it's also how deep they are. Some of them are 20 feet underneath the surface, which for four millennia ago is pretty impressive impressive. Several of them pass underneath the grand ramparts and continue beyond the city to parts unknown. The tunnels were almost definitely part of an escape route. If an invading army managed to breach the walls and was about to put the torch to the city, the people could have escaped through the tunnels and fled into the wilderness. And now for a quick break because it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Master Crown and Krista Dwin for supporting this channel. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with us. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family and see more videos about amazing discoveries. The Maronite Mummies In 1991, a team of archaeologists were exploring the Asi al-Hadath cave in Lebanon. They never anticipated in their wildest dreams that they would find eight mummified bodies in the back of the cavern. The mummies were left in the cave about 800 years ago. Researchers have since dated the burials to 1283 AD. The mummies were people from the Maronite culture, but what were they doing in the back of a cave? This was one of the most remarkable discoveries ever made in Lebanon for one big reason. Nothing like it has ever been found again. Scientists don't think any additional mummies will ever be recovered from here. So what made these people so special to be preserved in this unique way? That's the mystery that scientists are still trying to solve. To understand the details, I'd better start at the beginning with the cave. The one thing you need to know is that it's a pretty comfortable cave. There is a man-made reservoir near its entrance, suggesting people were living in the cave periodically since the Stone Age. It's unclear exactly how long or how many people called the cozy cave home, but most likely a lot. Other than being comfortable, the cave doesn't have much going for it. Now let's look at the mummies themselves. They were not mummies in the sense you might be imagining. Imagining. They weren't found bundled in wraps of paper, they didn't have their brains pulled out of their noses, and they weren't embalmed or mummified in the Egyptian sense of the word. These mummies were preserved naturally, by low humidity and an absence of predators and bugs. The people who placed the bodies in the cave may not have even known they would turn into mummies. The first mummy discovered was that of a baby girl. She was four months old when placed in the back of the cavern. Her discovery touched researchers so much that they gave her a name. Yasmin was placed on her back, her head resting gently on a smooth stone. She was carefully wrapped by the research team and transported to the lab. When they did a full analysis of her, the team was surprised to see she was wearing three dresses. One blue, one beige, and one a little darker beige. Her dresses were embroidered in silk, which was quite special for the 13th century. She also had a headband made of silk, one fabulous earring, and two coin pieces. The baby was incredibly loved by whoever buried her. Yasmin was not buried alone. She was placed beside her mother's left shoulder. Other than Yasmin and her mom, there were two other adults and four more children. But how did they all die and why were they put in the cave? Experts think it might have had something to do with the Crusades. 
The nearby city of Tripoli was one of the most important hubs for the Crusader Knights. There was a lot of fighting and tragedy that occurred in the surrounding area. The people in the cave may have sought refuge from conflict, but nobody really knows. The Maronite mummies are still a huge mystery. Nero's Lost Theater Just steps away from the Vatican, on the property of a future Four Seasons Hotel, the ruins of one of Rome's most notorious emperor's theaters was found. It's an amazing discovery that has archaeologists jumping for joy. The notorious emperor is none other than Nero, the man who allegedly watched Rome burn from the balcony of his grand palace. The ruins of his imperial theater were just discovered underneath the garden of the Palazzo della Robere. Archaeologists started excavating the walled garden in 2020 as part of a renovation plan. The palazzo is packed with so much history, it could make your head spin. It takes up a full city block just outside St. Peter's Square and is home to the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. When the Four Seasons decided they would occupy the site, they planned to open in 2025, but archaeologists had to get their gears spinning to uncover any potential secrets. And now, with not much time left, Nero's Theater has been unveiled. You might be wondering what I mean by Nero's Theater. I mean it was his private theater, owned by the Roman Emperor in the 1st century AD. Up until now, historians knew the theater existed, but only because of texts written by Pliny the Elder. They had no physical proof of it. Pliny wrote a lot of things down 2,000 years ago. He detailed everything from the lives of emperors to the mythical creatures beyond Rome's borders. Some of what he wrote is nonsense, but a lot of it is true. Pliny claimed that Nero had himself an epic theater in the center of Rome, where only he and his friends could hang out. Nero used the theater to rehearse his poetry and music, and perhaps to enjoy some debauchery. He ruled between 54 and 68 AD, and is famous today for his lascivious lifestyle. It turned out his private clubhouse was buried under the palazzo's public garden this whole time. The Tito Bustillo Cave Tito Bustillo Cave in Spain is only about 1,600 feet long, but it isn't the size that counts, at least not in this case. It's the content that makes the cave so exciting. 65,000 years ago, Neanderthals created the earliest known cave paintings in the world in Spain. 25,000 years later, the Neanderthals went extinct. The amazing cave paintings found in Tito Bustillo are not from Neanderthals, but rather from about 4,000 years after the last one died. These early examples of modern human artwork are from 36,000 years ago. But that's only the start of the adventure here. 9,500 years ago, there was a landslide. The original entrance to the cavern was blocked, forcefully shutting down human occupation of the cave. People had been living in it for tens of thousands of years until the landslide. Homo sapiens were drawing pictures on its walls for roughly 26,000 years. Then, long after, came the Spanish spelunkers. They uncovered a fissure in 1968 leading through the debris of the landslide. Using a little modern ingenuity, they created a new entrance into Tito Bustillo. The first excavation occurred in 1971. Since then, far more investigations have taken place. Experts have identified amazing images of deer, reindeer, goats, bison, and horses on the walls. Animals are only part of the picture. There is a section known as the Chamber of Vulvas, where the walls are decorated in images of the female form. Scientists don't know exactly what the purpose of the chamber was, but feel like it must have had something to do with fertility. The images on the wall suggest prehistoric humans were figuring out the mysteries of life. There is another chamber nearby that's covered in red paintings of humanoid figures, and these are the oldest. There are two red paintings of what kind of look like people, but could be aliens, standing like the original Adam and Eve. What they mean and who they represent could be the most important mystery in human civilization. 
Fairy Cave In the wilds of India's northern state of Meghalaya, an extraordinary geological feature has been uncovered. It's believed to be the longest sandstone cave in the world. It's so big that according to expert Brian D. Carbren, if you get lost inside, you may never find your way out. It's known as Fairy Cave, located in a picturesque part of India so magical it will take your breath away. The entrance of the cavern is 4,000 thousand feet above sea level, perched at the opening of a steep cliff and looking down upon a deep valley like a wound in the earth. The cave itself is about twice the size of the country of Gibraltar. It's 15 miles long, almost twice as long as the previous title holder for world's longest sandstone cave in Venezuela. I should also mention this is considered the wettest place in the world. The cave is sheltered in the impossibly lush and green landscape where the monsoon rains bring unbelievable abundance to the jungle. The man behind the discovery is Brian Carprin, who's in his mid-70s. Brian is a banker who has been exploring and discovering caves for over 25 years in his spare time. He first started his journeys in 1992, when only a handful of caves had been documented in the state of Meghalaya. Brian has gone on over 28 expeditions, discovered over 1,600 caves in the state, and now has identified the longest. Though to be honest, it's hard not to discover a cave in Meghalaya. Underneath the surface are some of the most complex cave systems known to humanity. What kind of secrets are in Fairy Cave? What could you find if you gathered the courage to descend into the depths? For sure, spiders. If you happen to suffer from arachnophobia, this is not the adventure for you. But there are more than spiders clinging to the cold walls of the narrow passages. Prehistoric shark teeth were found embedded in the rock. There is also an abundance of life, including everything from frogs to bats and even fish. Swiss cave topographer Thomas Arbenz said it is a serious challenge to survey the cave. Its corridors are so disorienting and confusing that it could be years until it's fully mapped and all the strange creatures inside are discovered. Ancient New York The remains of a city so big, archaeologists are calling it the Ancient New York, were recently revealed in Israel. This is the biggest and oldest discovery of its kind, making it truly remarkable. Underneath a layer of grass and dirt totally unknown for thousands of years, this mysterious city remained invisible. Archaeologists are still struggling to make sense of Ancient New York. They don't know what it was called or what its significance was in the old world. The city was likely founded about 5,000 years ago. Experts are judging right now, based on what little they have already dug up, that the city was home to roughly 6,000 people. That might not sound like much, but keep in mind this was the Bronze Age. The pyramids hadn't been built yet, and humanity was only starting to emerge in cities. This may have been the first truly humongous city in this part of Israel, and likely multicultural. It had planned roads, a grand ritual temple, and fortified walls. Archaeologists also found evidence of an even earlier settlement underneath the buried city. A city underneath a city. Underneath an empty modern field. That's what's happening here. It appears ancient New York was built on the ruins of a truly prehistoric settlement from 7,000 years ago. The excavation directors released a statement saying the creation of this city marked the urbanization of Israel. Although it doesn't have an official name, scientists are calling it En Esur. It's 161 acres large, which is double the size of any similar city from the same era in Israel. Archaeologists have their work cut out for them, though. They've already dug up over 4 million fragments of artifacts that need to be investigated. Some of the artifacts are from Egypt, suggesting that people from all over the world called this mysterious city home. Te Wairoa the most visited archaeological site in New Zealand is a place that most people in America don't have the slightest clue about. It's the buried village of Te Wairoa, home to tragedy and memories of devastation. Te Wairoa was established as a small and humble village on the shore of Lake Tarawera around 1850. It was jointly founded by a man named Reverend Seymour Mills Spencer and a group of Maori, as a place where visitors could relax on their way to explore the captivating pink and white terraces. The pink and white terraces were some of the most incredible natural wonders in the world, but they no longer exist. 
The terraces were once considered the eighth wonder of the natural world. The village functioned normally up until violence reached its borders in 1865. Twenty years earlier, the New Zealand Wars, also known as the Maori Wars, had broken out. The war was brutal, fought between the indigenous culture of the Maori and the colonial invaders. To be exact, it was the colonial government of New Zealand who the Maori were fighting against. It was not a fair fight by any stretch of the imagination. The colonial government amassed 18,000 British troops to keep the Maori rebels under control. There were only about 4,000 Maori warriors, significantly outgunned and outmanned. The British had artillery and cavalry, while the Maori were forced to use their knowledge of the land to fight back. Despite the British supremacy in terms of technology, there were many losses on both sides. About 1,800 Maori died and 800 Europeans were killed. In the end, the colonists won and massive plots of land were confiscated from the Maori. Only about half of that land has ever been returned. After the war was complete in 1872, people returned to the town of Te Wairoa, just in time for even more devastation. They built a couple of hotels, around 100 people lived in the town permanently, and then a volcano erupted. On June 10, 1886, Mount Tarawera blew its top, and almost every person in the village was killed. Over 150 lives were lost, and the pink and white terraces were destroyed. Te Wairoa is known as the Buried Village because it was buried by the volcano, similar to the way Pompeii was buried by Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The Dungeon There's a huge underground city in China nicknamed The Dungeon. It isn't ancient, but it is terrifying. The underground city is home to hundreds of thousands of people right now who are barely above slaves. They are considered low-income workers, known in China as the Rat Tribe. These people are so poor, they live in a series of tunnels and chambers plunging three stories beneath the ground. The history of the dungeon begins in the Cold War. Underneath Beijing, the complex was constructed as a bomb shelter. It covers an area of about 30 square miles, initially intended to protect people from devastating explosions of the nuclear variety. No nuclear bombs ever fell on Beijing, though, so the underground bunkers were gradually abandoned. Now, long after the Cold War has become a memory, the tunnels are more active than ever. It's believed there are at least one million workers living here, many of them migrants from other countries hoping to find opportunity in Beijing. But they aren't living here for free, as you might have been thinking. They aren't squatters living in dripping, forgotten tunnels. They have to pay rent to live in the cramped, lightless tunnels. The only good news is that the rent is cheap. Some members of the so-called rat tribe have been down in the dark for decades. Others rent the illegal homes temporarily until they can afford to move to the surface. It's a crazy sentence to hear a person say, but it's true. In China, there are people who are so poor, they are saving money just to move upward into the daylight. Could this be a glimpse into the dystopian future of the entire world? Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. The Bourbon Tunnel 100 feet beneath the streets of Naples is a vaulted tunnel very different from the dungeon in China. It isn't full of people skulking like rats in a sewer. It's full of priceless old vehicles. The tunnel was built as a secret escape tunnel for the royal family in the middle of the 19th century. It was eventually seen as redundant and fell into disuse. Somewhere along the way, Naples' Bourbon Tunnel became full of vintage cars and relics of wartime. The cars are still rusting in the tunnel today. In 1853, King Ferdinand II of Bourbon was the ruler of Sicily and Naples. If you've ever been to New Orleans, the famous Bourbon Street was named after this very king. He ruled during a politically tense time in Italy. There were riots and rebellions seemingly every day. King Ferdinand needed an exit plan in case things fell apart. He was mostly worried about the royal palace being swarmed by angry Italians. So he had a tunnel built from his palace to the nearby military barracks. The king died before the tunnel could be finished, and with the king dead, nobody bothered to finish it. 
The tunnel was left abandoned with the death of King Ferdinand, and nobody remembered it was there until World War II. When world broke out between Germany and the world, the people of Naples were desperate for places to hide during air raids. They retreated into the ancient cisterns and aqueducts beneath the streets. They also found the king's forgotten tunnel and used it as the perfect hiding place. About 10,000 locals jammed themselves into the tunnel like sardines while bombs fell on their eternal city. Many of the people left personal belongings behind. There are still hairbrushes, gas masks, and even the remains of beds scattered across the floor of the tunnel. But what about the cars? After the war was over, the Bourbon Tunnel seemed like an excellent place to turn into a garbage dump. Everything people didn't want was shoved into the tunnel, including fascist statues and impounded cars. Then, yet again, the tunnel was forgotten. It wasn't until the early 2000s that the tunnel was restored and the vintage cars revealed to the public. Now you can take a tour of this ancient place and see the cars for yourself. The Embracing Couple Imagine lying in your grave for 6,000 years with the person you loved most in this life. Not many people are given such an opportunity. But in 3800 BC, a couple in Greece were buried in an eternal embrace. They were discovered by scientists in 2015 at the back of a cave in Greece's Peloponnese region. They may have just earned themselves the world record for longest hug ever. Greek archaeologist Anastasia Papathanasiou told National Geographic the couple likely died while embracing one another. The way their bones are overlapped makes it appear like a natural hug. Anastasia doesn't think the couple were arranged in the position after their death. It means they were hugging each other at their time of passing and literally never let go. DNA analysis confirmed the skeletons came from 5,800 years ago. Their DNA also confirmed one to be a man and the other a woman. Nobody is sure how they died, and it honestly might be better not knowing. There is something so much more romantic about the mystery than the answer. There were brief rumors that the couple was stoned to death, but Anastasia said there is no evidence of such a brutal end. Maybe they died of natural causes, or perhaps they were murdered. Nobody knows. The subterranean cavern where the romantic couple was found is called Aleppo Tripa, which means foxhole in Greek. Other burials have been found from up to 6,200 years ago. Burials of children, adults, and even a burial of an embryo. Researchers believe those who were buried here lived during an extremely violent period in history. 31% of all skeletons uncovered from the cave show evidence of brutality. There's trauma inflicted by rocks and primitive war clubs. National Geographic said the cave has the highest frequency of head trauma of any other Neolithic site in Greece. The Thousand Buddhas Caves In the first century AD, the Silk Road brought fabulous riches from east to west. Beautiful fabric and exotic fragrances were transported in merchants' caravans from China all the way to the Roman Empire. But the road didn't just bring goods. It also transported religions, ideas, and traditions across the globe. Take, for example, Buddhism. 2,000 years ago, during the Eastern Han Dynasty, Buddhism arrived in Xinjiang along the Silk Road. Buddhists started building majestic temples. As the religion spread, it became more and more important. Buddhist artwork began appearing all across the region, but nowhere was quiet like the Kazil Cave Temple Complex. Buddhist artisans descended on the remote caves in droves. Painters, craftsmen, and monks worked together to turn a series of cliffside caves into one of the most important Buddhist centers in the world. By the 4th century AD, there was a worship temple, a lecture hall, and many rooms for monks. The walls of caves were decorated in images of the Buddha's life and painted with stories of karma. Then, in the 6th century, the underground caves really started to shine. Gold foil was applied to Buddhist statues, and huge pillars were carved into the cliffs. The fun came to an end in the 9th century. It's unclear what happened, but suddenly work ceased. Over 330 caves were left abandoned, while almost all the most important sculptures were stolen. Over the last thousand years, time has not been kind to the Buddhist caves. 
There are only six open to the public right now because the rest of them are so horribly damaged. Still, the statues, paintings, and vaults transport visitors back to a time when monks lived in caves and silks went by donkey across the globe. The Tunnel to Cleopatra Archaeologists were digging near the ruins of the Tapo Cyrus Magna Temple in Egypt when they found a buried tunnel. Researchers were hoping to find evidence of Queen Cleopatra's lost tomb. Sure enough, they found a pit leading to a tunnel that could lead to Cleopatra's final resting place. However, it's been over a year, and there haven't been any new announcements made. Is Cleopatra ever going to be found? Most people have never heard of the Tapo Cyrus Magna Temple before. It isn't in a particularly exciting tourist area. The temple is west of Alexandria, in the middle of nowhere. But just because tourists don't visit doesn't mean it isn't important. This was a mighty temple dedicated to Osiris. Kathleen Martinez from the University of Santo Domingo was digging outside the temple with her colleagues when she uncovered the entrance to the mysterious tunnel. By entrance, I mean a steep pit straight down into utter darkness. At the bottom of what is essentially a well, the tunnel stretches on for 4,300 feet. The tunnel has been hailed as a geometric miracle. Part of the tunnel is buried underwater, likely the result of an earthquake that struck around 2,000 years ago. The temple doesn't lead anywhere because most of it appears to have collapsed. Kathleen is still searching for Cleopatra at the temple, but right now, the tunnel appears to be a dead end. It obviously had a function when it was used prior to 320 BC, but nobody knows what that function was. The thing is so deep that solving its mystery could take years. Israel at War Deep beneath Israel, far under the ground, is a shocking world of winding tunnels, forgotten burrows, and stains of misery on the cold stone. There are incredible labyrinths that have been used by the Israeli people for over 2,000 years to hide from their enemies. But archaeologists are still trying to figure out the truth of this secret world. For a long time, it was assumed that twisting mazes of tunnels were carved during the Bar Kochba revolt of the 2nd century AD. It was the last failed time the Jewish people tried to free themselves of Roman dictatorship. Between 132 and 136, Jewish rebels led by legendary hero Simon Bar Kokhba waged guerrilla warfare. They did so by hiding in the tunnels beneath Judea and launching surprise attacks. The rebellion was effective at first, but quickly lost speed. The rebels were ultimately defeated, and the Jewish people kept under the heel of Rome. Archaeologists have identified an astonishing 530 buried complexes across 300 sites. These aren't restricted to any one place. The underground hideouts are all across central Israel, Galilee, and the West Bank. Most of the hiding complexes can be traced back to the revolt. But new discoveries are proving the underground tunnels already existed and were already being used prior to the Roman invasion of Israel. Some of them have been traced back to the 1st century BC, to the days of the Hasmoneans. To explain the dates of the caves and tunnels, experts have come up with a very simple explanation. Archaeologist Alexander Melamed said the hiding places developed organically. People dug hideouts underneath their own homes because of the consistent conflict in Israel. The underground complexes weren't part of a centralized preparation plan. They just slowly formed as more and more people prepared themselves for the inevitable invasion. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Tortured Mummy Researchers with the National University of San Marcos came across one of the most horrifying mummies in all of Peru. They found the mummified corpse of an individual inside an underground tomb. The mummy predates the Inca and was left down in the dark with their body bound in rope as if they were the victim of some sadistic serial killer. The discovery was made on the outskirts of Lima, a place which was a bustling community of traders and early farmers long before Lima became an international city. This was around 1,200 years ago. And here, in the archaeological complex of Cajamarquilla, the tortured mummy was found. The individual's burial chamber was so big, archaeologists could stand up inside it without brushing their heads against the top. After analyzing the mummy, 
Researchers are confident it was a young man between the ages of 18 and 22 when he died. He was placed gently inside the burial chamber against a pile of rocks, bound with ropes and then sealed away from the daylight. Oddly enough, he was also found near the remains of a dog and a guinea pig. The condition of the mummy has baffled scientists. They don't know why he was bound in such a bizarre way. It's an anomaly in the world of Peruvian mummies. And get this, the researchers also found the remains of mollusks near the entrance to the burial chamber. They believe the mollusks were left over from people who were eating when they visited the gravesite. It's almost as if people showed up to see the mummy like they would a tourist attraction, engorged themselves on mollusks while hanging out near the entrance. Lost Subterranean Church In the ancient city of Durbant, Russia, nuclear physicists have turned into unlikely archaeologists. These scientists used muon radiography to scan a subterranean building not far from the medieval fortress of Narinkala. For many years, archaeologists had suspected the building was once part of a Christian temple. But most of the building is underground, with nothing but a small dome visible over the surface. And because it's considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the archaeologists aren't allowed to excavate or go inside. So instead, they turned to the nuclear physicists. Using their radiography scan, they identified what might just be one of the oldest Christian churches in the world. The subterranean building dates back to around 300 AD, but was buried in the 8th century after the Arab conquest of the city. The scan revealed its exact size and shape. The structure was built in the shape of a cross, 36 feet high, 50 feet long, and 44 feet wide. It was clearly a temple, and most likely one of the earliest places for worshipping Christ. It may have originally been a Zoroastrian fire temple before Christianity came to the region 2,000 years ago, then was converted to the new world religion. The Hypogeum The Hypogeum of Hal Safliani, known simply as the Hypogeum, is an ancient subterranean structure dating back to the Neolithic days around 3,300 BC. It's located on the island of Malta and is the most impressive architectural achievement of the island's prehistory. In Greek, the word hypogeum translates to underground. It's believed that the hypogeum was a sanctuary and a mausoleum, as the skeletal remains of over 7,000 people have been documented inside by archaeologists. It was an underground temple and burial site, and is the most well-preserved example of Maltese temple building from ancient times. The discovery of the structure dates back to 1902, when workers building a new housing development accidentally smashed through its roof. The workers initially tried to hide the temple, as they didn't want their housing development to be ruined by an archaeological site, but it was found out and is now one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. The main reason for the Hypogeum's fame is just how intricate and complex the whole structure is. There are three levels carved out of the soft limestone fully underground. These levels are connected through passages and chambers, and the whole thing is a kind of underground labyrinth. The upper level was most likely occupied first, and then was expanded as the years went on and filled with dead bodies. The Amphibian Death Pit Archaeologists in England recently discovered a terrifying pit under the ground of a seemingly ordinary field. The pit goes back 2,000 years and was filled with the corpses of frogs and toads. Not warm corpses, but piles of shattered bones. Around 8,000 bones, to be exact. Even after the excavations were finished, archaeologists were left scratching their heads. Nobody knows why there is a gigantic underground pit filled with frog and toad bones, although there are some theories, of course. Some say these frogs were moving in search of water to mate, but instead fell into a deep ditch they couldn't jump their way out of. Others say it may have been something even more sinister. Vicky Ewins from the Museum of London Archaeology says it's a puzzling and unexpected find. The bones came from between the years 400 BC and 700 AD, and there are about 350 individuals in total. They were found next to a roundhouse in an ancient and nameless settlement, buried underneath a ditch. Even more mysterious is that there is no evidence that these frogs and toads were ever eaten by the local people. Yet for some bizarre reason, 
they were all discarded in a huge pit. Another theory is that they had all been infected by a virus. There doesn't seem to be any indication that the Logals had anything to do with their deaths. And yet it's all extremely mysterious. For all we know, this ancient settlement was occupied by frog-slaughtering cultists. Reclusive Arachnids Western Australia was once covered in lush forests and all kinds of unusual creatures. One of these creatures in the ancient Australian forests were called schizomids, eyeless critters who have been around for at least 66 million years. As Australia grew hotter and drier and the continent gradually shifted toward the equator, the forests died. And as they died, the schizomids had to find a new home. So they fled underground. Schizomids are distantly related to spiders and scorpions and can be found all over the world. But it's only in Western Australia where they live underground. 56 species have been found by researchers in the Pilbara region, a shockingly diverse group for such a tiny area. Biologists believe the reason for such unheard of diversity is due to their subterranean lifestyle. As the tiny critters buried themselves underground to survive, they became extremely isolated. They were separated by long stretches of land and cooked under the hot sun. With many groups of these creatures stuck under the ground, each one evolved its own path. Being underground had the same effect as being dropped on different islands. It could be a glimpse into our own future if the temperature above ground becomes so hot that we're forced into living beneath the surface like a bunch of schizomids. The Templar Tunnel In the city of Acre, located in modern Israel, there is an underground passage that was built by the Knights Templar and then lost for 700 years. The tunnel was built during the Kingdom of Jerusalem and served as a strategic corridor that connected the port to the palace occupied by the Templars. They could use the secret passageway to slip out of the city unnoticed and onto a boat. But then came the 13th century, and that was when disaster struck. The city of Acre fell to the Mamluks, the Templars were expelled, and the tunnel was lost and forgotten. It wasn't until 1994 that the tunnel was found by accident. A woman was fighting with a blocked sewage pipe under her house when she came across its entrance. But let's go back to the formation of the tunnel. Jerusalem was captured by the Muslims and their leader Saladin in the year 1187. The Templars were kicked out of their main headquarters, and much of the kingdom was overrun. There were only a few isolated crusader fortresses that remained resistant to the Muslim invasion. In 1189, Guy de Lusignan, the king of Jerusalem, launched a counterattack. He marched against the city of Acre, kicked out the invaders, and was soon reinforced by the armies of the Third Crusade from Europe. The Crusaders were such a big part of the counteroffensive that with Acre captured, they were allocated the entire southwestern sector. That was where their fortress was built, and where this tunnel was cut to lead down to the pier. Fossils Under Mars One of the most incredible underground discoveries took place off our planet, underneath the dusty surface of the Red Planet. NASA's Perseverance rover discovered rocks that may have the potential to hold fossils of extinct Martian life. The rover uncovered layers of sediment at the bottom of the Jezero crater, which scientists say could have once housed a large lake. The layers of sediment deposits go back 3.6 billion years. If there had been a lake here all that time ago, chances are whatever lived in it died and was preserved in the sediment. However, no alien life has been confirmed just yet. The Perseverance rover took off in July of 2020. It took seven months to reach Mars, then even longer to make its way to the crater. While the rover is checking out the rocks in search of fossils, it can't exactly dig as deep as it may need to. If Mars is anything like our own planet, the fossils are located just underneath the surface. Scientists believe that if we dig deep enough, especially on the bottom of a dried lake, that will be our best bet at finding evidence of alien life. A Forgotten Mine In Cheshire, a region in northwest England, an abandoned cobalt mine dating back 200 years has recently been explored by some very brave archaeologists. Jamie Lund with the National Trust and Ed Coughlin with the Derbyshire Caving Club tunneled deep into the long-forgotten cobalt mine and came across an unexpected plethora of artifacts. 
The mine itself was in production during the Napoleonic Wars. That was back in the 1800s when Napoleon Bonaparte tried to take over the world in the name of France and came up short. The mine was most likely abandoned by the year 1810 and without much warning. Jamie and Ed discovered items abandoned by the miners, left behind as if they had run out of the mine in a hurry and never came back. They discovered leather shoes, a metal button from a jacket, pieces of mining equipment, and even clay pipes used to smoke tobacco. One of the coolest discoveries found was a clay bowl that some of the more superstitious miners buried inside of a wall to give thanks to the mine for the quality of the minerals it produced. This was an old superstition that miners practiced, giving the bull as an offering to the mine itself, as if it were a deity. Under Angkor Angkor Wat is considered the greatest temple complex the world has ever seen. Angkor was the capital of the Khmer Empire in the 12th century. It took an incredible 5 million tons of sandstone to build this ancient city, which doubled as a Hindu sanctuary riddled with sacred temples. It was one of the greatest constructs in Asia, and after the crushing of the Khmer Empire in the 15th century, it was lost to the jungle. These days, Angkor Wat is the premier tourist destination of Cambodia, but some wonder if there is more to the site than meets the eye. There is a theory that says underneath the central shrine of Angkor Wat is a secret hidden chamber. It's interesting because if you look at the features of the temple complex, there is clearly a rising gradient up to the central shrine. The city was built at ground level with sand and clay, but for some reason they made an artificial hill and stacked the biggest temple right on top of it. So, what could be hiding underneath the floor of Angkor Wat? One theory is that there is an energy device hiding there. This is from the same people who believe the Pyramid of Giza is an ancient super battery left behind by aliens. In reality, there could be some kind of mysterious crypt or a secret dungeon used to conduct rituals. Or maybe there is nothing at all. Bavarian Tunnels In the German state of Bavaria, there are over 700 tunnel networks spread throughout the region. These are subterranean passages which scientists know very little about. Some say they were built as graves. Some say they were ritual spaces where ghoulish things took place and others believe they were hideaways to protect villagers from marauding bandits. All we know for sure is that there are nearly a thousand of these subterranean vaults that have already been found, and there could possibly be even more that have collapsed or have never been documented. One of these holes was found by a dairy farmer. She was walking through a meadow with her cows when one of them suddenly fell into a hole. A crater opened up beneath the cow's feet, and the poor girl fell into it up to her hips. It was an unfortunate accident for the cow, but revealed a mysterious piece of ancient history. After the misfortune with the bovine was finished, Beat and her husband Rudy went to check out the mysterious hole. It was narrow, damp, and led diagonally into the earth. Rudy traveled deep into the hole until he realized quite abruptly that he could no longer hear anything. He also started having difficulty breathing, so he crawled his way back out. But this is only one example. Local geologists say the entire state of Bavaria is perforated with underground mazes, and nobody knows why. The locals call them goblin holes. They tell stories of the mischievous goblins who lived in these small dwellings and tormented people in the Middle Ages. The Maya Crypt The ancient Maya loved the game of pelota. It was just as important to the Maya as football or soccer and basketball is today. You can think of it like a national sport, played since at least 1650 BC. It was also most likely played by many different Mesoamerican cultures across what is today Latin America. The problem is that nobody really knows the rules now. All archaeologists and historians have to base their theories on are the carvings and mosaics found in temple ruins. Pelota was similar to racquetball. Only the players struck the ball with their hips to push it from one side of the arena to the other. The ball was enormous, and many depictions of the game in Maya artwork show the ball being nearly the size of a human. This is where things get terrifying. Archaeologists were studying the ruins of the Maya Sun Temple at Tonina, an ancient site in southern Mexico, when they found an underground crypt beneath the temple filled with some curious items. 
There were 400 urns filled with human ashes, rubber, plant roots, and coal. The consensus between the archaeologists is that the crypt doubled as a manufacturing facility. Dead bodies were burned to ash, then mixed with rubber to be turned into giant rubber balls that would be used for sport. Nobody knows exactly what this means. All the archaeologists know for sure is that the rubber balls used in the Maya's favorite pastime were made partly from human remains. The Temple in the Alps About 30 miles from the Italian city of Turin lies the foothills of the Alps, some of the greatest mountains in Europe. One place in particular that's quite fascinating is the Valley of Cusela. This place is like something out of a fairy tale, a picturesque lush valley littered with small medieval villages. It's also home to an underground temple, which some people have called the eighth wonder of the world, a thing that's invisible to those on the surface and has been kept almost a complete secret until just recently. The temple is located 100 feet under the surface at the foot of the mountains, hidden from the public and one of the most brilliant pieces of architecture in all of Italy. It's called Damanhur, and the temple is separated into nine rooms split across five levels, with some chambers having ceilings as high as 25 feet. Each room is connected by hundreds of feet of lavishly decorated tunnels, with the whole thing covering about 300,000 cubic feet. Although this may look like an ancient place built by a group of dedicated Romans thousands of years ago, it's no more than 40 years old. The works of art in the temple are the result of 15 years of work by roughly 150 volunteers. The brilliant architect behind the project was Oberto Araudi. He built his house in the remote hillside in 1977, then began digging into the mountain using nothing but rudimentary hammers and picks. More and more people began to join in the project until they had completed a subterranean temple complex of murals, stained glass windows, mysterious mosaics, and even secret doorways. The Entrance to Hell In ancient Greece, Mount Olympus was the seat of the gods and Hades was the world of the dead, a place of fire and brimstone. Unlike the heaven and hell from Christian mythology, both these places were real to the Greeks and the Romans. Mount Olympus was a very real mountain on the Greek mainland, a place that could be visited by any willing to hike straight up into the clouds. And even Hades was accessible through a sulfurous opening in the earth that supposedly led to the underworld. Archaeologists recently uncovered this very gate to Hades during excavations at the ancient Roman site of Hierapolis in Turkey. Researchers say that pilgrims thousands of years ago would have come from all over the world to bathe in the hot springs at Hierapolis and worship the gods at the local temples. Because the town was built over a thermal area, there was one place in particular that frightened the Greeks. It was a cave that led down to unfathomable depths and was filled with a dark and cloudy vapor. Any animal that entered the cave would die instantly, and any man who entered would become too sick to continue beyond the threshold. You can see why the Greeks would believe this was a passage to the underworld. In their mythology, mortals weren't really allowed to enter Hades, yet here was this entrance to a subterranean world filled with poison gas that killed all living things. They began worshipping it as a gate to the realm of the dead. In reality, it was just toxic sulfur rising from out of the planet. The Oldest Groundwater Scientists have just discovered some of the oldest groundwater on the planet. These researchers went deep inside an underground mine system in South Africa to test the stagnant water down in its depths. They discovered the water to be approximately 1.2 billion years old. And believe it or not, the peculiar chemical makeup of the water could lead to new discoveries on how energy is produced and stored within the Earth's crust. Researcher Oliver War from the University of Toronto described the discovery as a Pandora's box of helium and hydrogen-producing power. The water was found in Moab Kotsong, an old gold and uranium mine near Johannesburg. It has one of the deepest mine shafts in the world going down approximately 1.86 miles below the surface. Samples of this water show it to contain about eight times more salt than seawater, along with elements like uranium, helium, argon, and even krypton. While the science is extremely complicated, 
The main thing to know is that the water is so old that it shows how helium is diffused from deep inside the planet. Scientists believe the processes going on in the Earth, visible thanks to this ancient water, could be mimicked in the future to create clean, limitless, and stable energy for everyone. Viking Heidi Holes Joe Thompson is an amateur explorer and fan of the outdoors from County Dublin in Ireland. Joe was the first person in hundreds of years to climb down into an ancient underground tunnel northeast of Dublin. It was one of Joe's friends who discovered the ancient tunnel in his cauliflower field. He revealed the subterranean system while he was breaking up soil clods totally by accident. Being the brave one of the two, and clearly more curious, Joe descended into the dark abyss for the first time in at least 800 years. It wasn't very big, just a small underground hidey hole that would have been the perfect size for a dozen or so people. The truly fantastic part is that it may have once been used by Vikings as a kind of primitive bunker. There are other subterranean bunkers like this all over the island, and at least 1,000 of them have already been identified. Most were built between the 9th and 12th centuries as hiding places or to store food. However, archaeologists can't decide whether these were used by Vikings to hide from angry locals after they'd gone on a raid, or by scared locals who didn't want to be slaughtered by the Vikings. The Guardian Exchange Under the streets of the city of Manchester in the United Kingdom, there are tunnels and bunkers long since abandoned. These underground shafts make up a place called the Guardian Telephone Exchange, and they were carved out of the earth at the height of the Cold War to protect England in the event of a nuclear attack. The subterranean system is only accessible via two entrances. One of them is allegedly hidden within Chinatown, and the other is kept securely closed behind the Piccadilly Hotel. The underground network started construction in 1954 and was finished by 57, when the threat of a nuclear war was at the forefront of everyone's minds. The purpose of the Guardian Telephone Exchange was to provide unfaltering communication between the government in the UK and the government in the US in the event of war. Even if London got hit with a nuclear weapon, the facility underneath Manchester would be able to continue operations and rally a response with the US. There were two other facilities, one in Birmingham and one in London. All of them were highly classified, hidden underneath the streets and invisible to normal citizens. It wasn't until 1968 that the facility was declassified. These days, the whole system is like something from a post-apocalyptic movie. The tunnels are now decaying, most of the equipment has been removed, and the only things that remain are telephone cables that are no longer in use after a fire in 2004. Underground Bowling Alley In the beautiful downtown core of Hot Springs, Arkansas, there is a mysterious abandoned underground bowling alley. It's arguably the creepiest place in town, and one of the strangest places in the entire state. But why is there an abandoned bowling alley here at all? According to local historians, the Dugan and Stewart building, which stands on top of the bowling alley, was constructed in 1904. It was used to house medical offices up until the 1950s, when it transitioned into the Wheatley Hotel. Starting in the years of Prohibition, Hot Springs became a favorite getaway for gangsters from New York and Chicago. Mobsters like Al Capone would visit Hot Springs to get some rest and relaxation away from their criminal empires. And while they were there, they liked to have a secret meeting place where they could drink and party. Hot Springs was like the Las Vegas of Arkansas, even complete with gambling and slot machines. The bowling alley under the Wheatley Hotel was almost certainly a favorite gathering place for America's lords of the underworld, at least up until that era came to a close over 50 years ago. The whole place is now abandoned, empty and unused beneath the hotel. Mysterious Underground Passage In the Caja mountain range, located in County Cork, Ireland, workers operating an excavator as part of a road project came across something that blew their minds. They were digging when they exposed an opening in the earth leading to a dark and dreary underground passage. At first, it looked like it could have been the entrance to a cave, but after archaeologists showed up to investigate, they confirmed the tunnel to be man-made dug out of solid rock at least 1,000 years ago. 
There has been very little archaeological research done in the Kaha Mountains. We know that the lower hills were inhabited by Neolithic settlements thousands of years ago, but very little else. According to James Egan, an archaeologist with the NRA, there were two chambers inside the cave, suggesting it was used as a souterrain. This is the scientific name for an underground dwelling associated with Europeans in the Iron Age. They were small passages tunneled through the rock and used for a variety of different things. They could be used by the villagers as a place of hiding if an invading force came, or they could also be used to store perishable food or valuables. Souterrains were typically tunneled underneath small settlements, then hidden on purpose so that outsiders would never find them. What this seems to suggest is that 1,000 years ago, the Kaha Mountains were the scene of a flourishing Irish society. But that society has since abandoned the mountains. Their settlements have been reduced to nothing but dirt, and the only thing that survives are their secret underground lairs. Secret Civil War Bunker A family in the city of New Madrid, Missouri, decided they were going to dig a garden. It was a group effort, with Christy Kalmeyer Keene in charge of the operation. The family gathered together their tools, began to dig, and came across something unbelievable. They found a mysterious war bunker dating back to the 1860s. It was a civil war bunker, hidden underneath a thick layer of dirt and roots until Christy and her family disturbed the ground in the backyard of their new house. They first found the timber entrance, the wooden support beams, and the shape of the roof, then burst into the buried structure itself. It was such a monumental discovery that Christy got a hold of the State Historical Society of Missouri to pay her a visit. The inspectors from the museum took a couple of timbers with them for review, and it was a whole ordeal to figure out whether the bunker was legit or not. It appears to have been built during the Civil War, sometime between 1861 and 1865. The bunker is too dangerous to use these days, decaying and on the verge of total collapse. They used a metal detector inside it, but the family didn't find any artifacts, and there is no information on who built it or what exactly it was used for. Cash from the Great Depression Rich Gilson and his wife Suzanne live in Wildwood, New Jersey, and recently came into a bit of unexpected cash. They began doing renovations in their home, which required them to dig up their backyard, where they came across a lost treasure. Rich and Suzanne found $1,000 in cash from 1934. The money was wrapped in aging brown paper, separated into bundles of $10 bills and $20 bills. According to what the family told local news sources, it looked like a bunch of mini cigars bound together. But really, it was somebody's lost stack of cash. Experts say it was most likely something known as safety money. During the Great Depression, it was common for people to hide and bury a large portion of one's savings. When the economy crashed in 1929, most Americans lost all faith in the banking system. Whatever cash they had, or whatever cash they could get out of the bank, they would put it in boxes or jars and bury it in the backyard. Somebody nearly 100 years ago did this exact thing on what is now the Gilson family's property. And while $1,000 might not seem like a lot, in 1934, that would have been like burying roughly $22,000 in today's money. What would you do if you found treasure in your backyard? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!